Hey, what's going on everybody? Jake Verdon Tech here, and today I received a package from Amazon, and I recently pulled the trigger on a capture card. This is the first time I've ever purchased a capture card, so I've been looking into capture cards for quite a while. I haven't done as extensive research in the past as I have more recently, and choosing one was really tough for me. Trying to find one that fit all my needs and utilize the hardware I have the absolute best it was really tricky, but I finally just went ahead and pulled the trigger on one and got it in today. So I put off buying a capture card for quite some time now, mainly because I do mostly just recordings of PC gameplay, which is all done through OBS, just using the screen recording option. And I don't do any live streaming at the moment, but I have tossed around the thought of maybe getting into live streaming certain games. So I'd like to have that option and maybe a good capture card to get a little bit more performance when streaming and have extra utilities that typically comes with a capture card. And I really would like to have the option to record console gameplay as well. I do a lot of gaming on the Nintendo Switch. So having the option to record and live stream um, any consoles that I'm running I thought would be really nice to have in my arsenal. So going past all of that, I finally made the decision and purchased the Elgato 4K60 Pro, and this is the Mark II version. So the Mark II version not only is obviously a newer revamped version of the original 4K60 Pro, it's got some different features. So most notably, it's a smaller form factor capture card. It still is a PCIe capture card, but the shroud and the PCB itself is much, much smaller than it was in the uh, previous 4K60. Now it's about the same size as the, I believe it's the HD60 Pro. That's their 1080p PCIe card. So a lot more features have been packed into this one in a smaller form factor and a much, much lower price. When the original 4K60 Pro came out, it retailed at like $399. And right now you can pick these up for $249.99 US. So the price point of this capture card at $249 actually made this decision harder for me because if it was the previous price at $399, I wouldn't even have considered this card just because I didn't desperately need a capture card. So I would have been looking more towards the HD60S or HD60S Plus, which was still on my radar. I very strongly considered buying the HD60S Plus in hopes to configure a dual PC stream setup where I have my water cooled PC as my gaming system and my ITX rig as the streaming setup. But looking into it and doing all the research on what it takes to get that setup configured, it just seemed like too much, almost more than it was worth and I didn't know how the reliability and bandwidth the USB would be in the HD60S, especially when you're talking about in a dual system configuration. So I really, really wanted to use my ITX rig as a streaming PC to get some use out of it and just utilize my hardware most effectively. I know it's not fully necessary to have two PCs to stream, but I figured if I had another PC, I might as well utilize it. Unfortunately, I didn't go that route, um, mainly because I was concerned about the whole setup configuration with running a USB capture card from the ITX rig to my gaming rig and all the um, audio syn synchronization that had to be synchronization that had to be configured between these two PCs. It seemed like a huge hassle, so I ended up just going with the. 4K60 Pro and with the intentions to put it into my gaming PC. So we might use it too for recording PC footage to have the multi-app support, but mainly for console streaming and recording, I think we're gonna be using it for. In a perfect world, I would have liked to have put the 4K60 Pro in the ITX rig, but unfortunately we only have one PCIe slot in that machine and I thought we had a PCIe by one, but we don't unfortunately. And actually I don't think any ITX motherboards do. 
So usually you're just stuck with the one PCIe by 16 slot for your graphics card. So unfortunately that wasn't gonna work. So the only way to get a capture card from the ITX PC is the USB route. So guys, let's go ahead and do a quick unboxing of this thing. And we're gonna talk about the reasons why I went with this particular capture card, aside from some of the ones we just kind of mentioned. So let's get to it. Alrighty guys, so here is the box to the 4K60 Pro. This is gonna be a really quick unboxing. I'm gonna try to fly through this because there's plenty of people on YouTube that have already unboxed this product. Let's go ahead and get after it. So this is actually only the second Elgato product I've ever purchased. I do have a Camlink 4K that I use a fair amount not as much as I probably should but it's always there if I need it so well here we go as you can see we got our 4k 60 pro and from what I could tell in the videos this thing does look much smaller than the previous one the previous one you would have the shroud I think come out to about there and might have been a little bit longer big PCB capture card but Nice and wrapped in anti-static bag. Possible quick start guide. We have, looks like another bracket. In case we need a smaller one. Let's see, Elgato sticker, which is pretty cool. Alrighty. So we have a standard HDMI cable that it includes just one because they assume that whatever you're going to be capturing it already has a HDMI cable that it came with or you already have so, so this is it as far as what's included which is as expected we really don't need anything else um, I did order some longer HDMI cables because my consoles are a little ways away from my desk here Is the 4K60 Mark II. As you can see, we don't have any sort of coverage on the back of the PCB, but that's okay. It's just um, an extra spot you gotta gotta be cautious of. But very nice hardware. I don't know if they've made any other iterations to the shroud and the PCB, because as I've heard on the regular. Um, first version of the 4k 60 even though it has this big elaborate shroud on it it didn't have any sort of cooling I believe it's just all passive cooling even though they probably could have put a heat sink in here to help it out but then on the side we obviously have our in and out so that's pretty much it guys on the unboxing nothing much to see here but we'll move on to installation, and like I said, we're going to talk about more reasons why the 4K60 is a really good option right now in 2020 for a PCIe capture card and capture cards in general. Alrighty guys, we got it unboxed, so now talking about why I went with the 4K60 Pro from Elgato. So reason number one is ease of use, just having a PCIe capture card in one system really takes a lot of the setup out the only thing that I'll have to configure is OBS on this system and the 4k capture software from Elgato which is pretty easy to use it should be pretty intuitive um, shouldn't have any issues there opposed to my other option is if I got the HD 60s or HD 60s plus we would have to configure the streaming PC my gaming PC try to sync up the audio in between and figure out how we are transmitting the HDMI data, um, the sound data going through the HDMI cable, all that stuff. Um, trying not to hurt the re um, response time and refresh rate of our monitor performance and stuff, you know, going through HDMI. It was just looking to be a huge mess for not much gain. So. Like I said, 4K60 Pro, one system, PCIe card, 
just for the ease of use. Reason number two is increased reliability. From many videos that I've watched, PCIe is typically much more reliable when it comes to these capture cards. USB gets tricky because of USB bandwidth. You know, if you have lots of peripherals on your system, you know, I mean, it could be anything here. Even if it's just a dedicated streaming PC, that's more than likely not going to be the only USB device you have on that system. You're going to have like a mouse and keyboard, obviously, to run your streaming PC and, you know, do what you need to do. And then possibly like a Cam Link 4K is what I would be using. Something to have your webcam set up and then on top of that is your uh, capture card which is run through USB so your stream quality and reliability might not be as good just because of that bandwidth if you're going through PCIe it's much more reliable just because it's a direct faster shot on your motherboard and there's less bandwidth too and it's very broken up even though you might have a graphics card or two on the motherboard it still usually isn't an issue the way those PCIe lanes are designed. So the one thing that you absolutely cannot do with the 4K60 Pro and other PCIe capture cards is capture or live stream off of a laptop. So obviously this is an internal card only, so you can't use it on a laptop. So that's where the pros of the USB capture card really come into play. So if there's any chance you're going to need to use it on a laptop or on the go, the USB is a really good option. And I mean, when I say it's not as reliable and stuff, it's still pretty reliable from what I've heard. Personally, I've never used one. And this is my first capture card, like I've said. But from what everybody says, it's obviously still usable. But... You kind of got to look at your use cases and what is the best option for you. So reason number three I went with the 4K60 Pro is multi-app support, which definitely will come in handy, especially if you want to record, live stream simultaneously, which is definitely something if I am live streaming, I would like to do. And a lot of people do this too, because if they want to record it, maybe they don't want like their live stream overlays showing up in the recording so they'll just have a record without you know the overlays while your live stream is still going to have your overlays so multi apps are taking use of this footage at the same time which is really cool and it's a great feature that this card supports and a lot of other cards support it as well too so the next reason i chose the 4k 60 pro and it's definitely one of the top of the line offerings from elgato and it's coming in at a much lower price like i mentioned earlier now it does support higher refresh rates so now you don't you can use this capture card and you don't have to be worried about being fixed to like 60 hertz typical hdmi stuff you can still get those higher refresh rates if you're running a more competitive high refresh rate monitor or something like i have here this alienware which runs right around 100 hertz refresh rate and can be overclocked to 120 so this card will support those refresh rates and even higher so reason number five why I chose the uh, 4K60 Pro is instant game view. And what this is, it is a extremely low latency technology inside the Elgato capture cards, which captures the footage coming from your consoles typically. And there's almost no latency or very little lag time um, to a point where it might not be noticeable. I mean, I've seen... And I'm curious to try it. I have seen people plug in a console to the capture card and not run a HDMI to the monitor. They'll just open up their recording software or streaming software. They can view the game that they're playing there. And it runs just as fast as if you had your console plugged into a monitor. In most cases, like I said, I haven't tried this yet. So I'm curious to see how it does. In non-competitive titles, you're probably fine to do it. But if you want the absolute competitive edge and absolutely no um, possible things that could render your gameplay, it's probably best to plug in another HDMI from the capture card to a monitor. But like I said, it's, it's not no latency. I think that's the big difference. It's low latency. 
and depending on how low Elgato has it in their capture cards, it might actually be usable in a stream view setting. So my final reason for going with the Elgato 4K60 Pro is basically future proofing. With this capture card, it has so much performance and specs packed into it. Um, we're talking, you know, 4K 60 FPS recording and live streaming. Anything between that and 1080p 240 FPS. Um, and there's, like I said, there's stuff in between. So it covers a wide variety of different uh, resolutions, frame rates that you might be streaming and recording in. So this card will have it covered and especially too with the new consoles coming out where we're going to have much higher performance in this generation of consoles. Um, if the titles do take advantage of the hardware that will be out, um, this capture card can definitely take advantage of recording and live streaming that. So as far as installation goes, it's actually really simple. It's just a PCIe device. So you'll plug it into one of your PCIe slots on your motherboard, properly secure it with the thumb screws on the side of your case, and away you go. Then you just have to connect your desired console with via HDMI to the in port on the Elgato capture card, and then the out will go to your monitor. And if you don't want to use out, I believe that's where you can just use an instant game view. You can actually play through um, OBS or the 4K capture utility using utilizing that low latency gameplay. And the only software you'll actually need from Elgato to get this thing installed and configured is the 4K capture utility which can be installed right from Elgato's site. Really quick, easy download and installation. I haven't messed with this software too much yet. I did have it installed from the camlink 4k i purchased in case i wanted to record through it so that's it for this video guys thanks for watching i really just wanted to share the research i did when it comes to choosing a capture card because i was really on the fence whether i wanted to run dual system with a usb capture card or run a pcie capture card in one system and like i said i would have done it in two systems but my other build is an ITX rig and we don't have the PCIe lanes necessary to run it. So I um, wanted to kind of go over the things I considered before purchasing this capture card and all the reasons why I chose the 4K60 Pro. So I might be doing a video in the future on maybe a review for this product. Um, like I said, because I just unboxed it, haven't gotten to use it any yet. So this was kind of a unboxing, first impressions, and why I went with this type of capture card and configuration, and why I went with the Elgato 4K60 Pro over any other capture card. So I just wanted to make a video on that and hopefully help you guys narrow down your choice if you are in the market for a capture card. Well, thanks for watching, guys. If you want to see more tech videos like this one, be sure to subscribe. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. would be much appreciated. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.